Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is Apostle Glenda Phillips Lee. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I praise God for each and every one of you. Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is Apostle Glenda Phillips. We thank God for um, everyone that's going to join us today. This is our Zoom platform. Today, we'll be going over again the exposition of the God principles. We're going to go over some um, diagram. And um, this is the manual for the 12 hour lecture in the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification. And it was um, designed and put forth by Reverend Sun Young Moon. And um, as revelation that was given to him by God. So I want you to put on your thinking hats, amen. I want you to come together and let's see what God is saying in this hour, amen. So this is the introduction. Hallelujah. Look at the human thriving. Everyone is struggling to obtain happiness and avoid misfortune. You got a man and his desire. Everyone wants happiness. No one wants misfortune. From the commonplace affairs of individuals to the great events that shape the course of history, each is at root an expression of the human aspiration for greater happiness. How then does happiness arrive? People feel joy when their desires are fulfilled. The Bible says, hope deferred, make it the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is what? It is a tree of life. We have our original mind, amen, hallelujah, streaming from our desires. And then there are circumstances that may come into cause an evil to present itself, amen. But the original mind is always uh, a mind of goodness, a mind of joy. And the evil mind always will lead you to misfortune. The word desire, however, is often not understood in its original sense because in the present circumstances, our desires tend to pursue evil rather than good. The original mind is well aware that the desires pursuing evil leads to misfortune. Therefore, it repels evil desires and strives to follow goodness, even at the cost of their lives. People seek for the joy that can enrapture the original mind. Some biblical examples in Matthew 3, 9, John the Baptist said to the Jews, do not presume to say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Moreover, in Romans 2, 28 and 29, St. Paul says, for he is not a real Jew who is one outwardly nor is true circumcision something external and physical. He is a Jew who is inward and real. Circumcision is the matter of the heart, spiritual and not literal. The Bible lets us know that man looks on the outward appearance, but it's God that judges the heart. In Romans 9, 6, St. Paul mentions, not all who are descending from Israel belong to Israel. They approached those Jews who boasted that they were, amen, the chosen people. In human contradictions and the fall, we see happiness and goodness streaming from the original mind. And then the evil mind, amen, comes from the evil mind, wickedness and misfortune. There's um, 
a contradiction, meaning there's a war that's going on, amen, and there's a state of destruction based on what you choose. That's why God gave each of us a free will. See, within the self-same individual are two opposing inclinations, the original mind, which desires goodness, and the evil mind, which desires wickedness. They are engaged in a fierce battle, striving to accomplish two conflicting purposes. This is the human contradiction, and being possessing such a contradiction is doomed to perish. Amen. Therefore, a human being having acquired this contradiction live in the state of destruction. The state of destruction, amen, equals to the fall, amen, the fall of man. If burdened by such a contradiction from its inception, however, human life would not have been able to rise, this contradiction, therefore must have developed after the birth, birth of the human race. Christianity sees this state of destruction as the result of the human fall. Look at man's heart, amen. And the Bible says that man's heart is what? Continually wicked, but there's a part of man that desires good, and then there's another part that contradicts the goodness and desires evil, which calls the man to be in the midway position if he doesn't make a decision, amen. Which efforts, uh, which these efforts to resolve the contradiction. The Bible says, choose you to stay who you're going to serve. When we realize the fact that we have arrived at the state of self-destruction, we make um, desperate efforts to resolve the contradiction within by dispelling the evil desires and embracing the good desires. Nevertheless, we have been able to find the answer to this. We have, we have been unable to find the answer to the ultimate question, what is the nature of good and evil? Furthermore, we remain entirely ignorant of the answers to such questions as what is the original mind and what is the origin of the evil mind? What is the root cause of the contradiction that brings people to ruin? in order for us to um, overcome ignorance, we're going to have to seek out the good. Amen. Because that's the only way we will experience a good life. So to take the path to the good life, the original mind seeks to, to take the path to the good life, the original mind seeks, we must overcome this ignorance and gain the ability to distinguish clearly between good and evil. Consider from the viewpoint of the intellect, the human fall represents humanity's descendant into ignorance. Descent into ignorance. People are composed of two aspects, that's the internal and the external, or the mind and the body. Likewise, the in intellect consists of two aspects, which is the internal, your heart, and the external, your body or your mind, the in internal. In the same way, there are two types of ignorance. There's internal ignorance and there's external ignorance. When it comes to internal ignorance in religious terms is spiritual ignorance. It is an ignorance of such um, questions as what is the uh, origin of human beings, what is the purpose of life, the things we don't know, what happens after death, do God and the next world exist, and what is the nature of good and evil. External ignorance refers to ignorance of the natural world, including the human body, meaning we don't know everything, and it is ignorance of such issues as what is the origin of the physical universe and what are the natural laws concerning all phenomena? 
from the dawn of history until today, human beings have ceaselessly, ceaselessly searched for the truth with which to overcome both types of ignorance and attain knowledge. Humans through religion has followed the path of searching for internal path and through science has followed the path of seeking external truth. Religion and science, each in its own spheres, have been the method of searching for truth in order to conquer ignorance and obtain knowledge. Eventually, the way of religion and the way of science should be integrated and their problems resolved in one united overtaken or undertaken. The two aspects of truth, internal and external, should develop in full cognizance, only then completely liberated from ignorance and living solely in uh, goodness will we enjoy um, internal happiness. We can discern two broad courses in the search for uh, solutions to the fundamental questions of human life. In the first, people have searched within the um, resilient material world. Those who walk this path believe it to be the supreme way, taking pride in the omnipotence of science and the material comfort it provides. Nevertheless, that alone cannot truly gratify the spiritual desires of the inner self. Scripture tells us we're in this world, but we're not of it. So this complete happiness cannot be obtained solely with external conditions centered on the physical body. Remember, um, God told, uh, God, Jesus told the enemy, the devil, he said, man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that what proceeded from the mouth of God. Until now, scientists, scientific research has uh, limited itself to the external world, the world of phenomena. However, science today is entering a new phase. It is compelled to elevate its gaze to the internal and casual world of essence. The scientific world began to recognize that science cannot achieve its ultimate goal without uh, the radical explanation of the casual spiritual world or the internal truth. The second course of human endeavor is to attempt to answer the fundamental question about human life by transcending the resilient world of phenomena and searching in the world of essence like philosophies and religions which have pursued this path have made many contributions and the philosophers saints and sages in history set out to pave the way for goodness amen however has any philosopher ever arrived at the knowledge that could solve human energy's deepest anguish <laughs> However, has any philosopher ever arrived at the knowledge that could solve humanity's deep in anguish? Philosophies and religions made so many contributions. Amen. Hallelujah. And they're trying to um, solve some of the issues that we face daily. That's why they go into this type of practice. But have we yet um, came to a conclusion? or a satisfied result. 
their teachings and philosophies raise more unsettled questions and given rise to uh, skepticism. So. In Christian um, nations today, many citizens will not sit together with their brothers and sisters of different colors. And this illustrates uh, the actual situation of Christianity, which has lost much of the power to put into practice the words of Jesus and become a house of lifeless uh, rituals. On the other hand, there's one social vice that human efforts alone can never eradicate, and this is sexual immorality. Christian doctrine regards this as the cardinal sin, but today's Christians cannot block this path of ruins down which so many people are rushing blindly. This is evident that uh, conventional Christianity stands powerless to carry on God's providence to save humanity in this present age. I'm looking at this, it's um, conventional Christianity. Think about that, keep that in mind, amen. So what is the reason that religious people who earnestly searching for internal truth have been unable to accomplish their God-given mission? Just as people obtain perfection of character, only when the mind and the body are fully united, the two worlds of essence and phenomena must also join in perfect harmony before the ideal world can be realized. Spiritual joy is uh, completely without genuine physical happiness. Religions have despised bodily pleasure in their uh, quest for the life eternal. However, the eternity of this world and the desire for physical pleasure um, tenaciously grab whole of religious people, driving them into a depth of agony, meaning they're suffering because they, they can't obtain what they've been trying to obtain. And the contradiction and sad in which plagues the life of devotion is a, a, a principal cause for the inactivity and the weakness of today's religion. Another fact to have faded has faded religions to decline. In the step with the progress of science, the human intellect requires a scientific approach to understanding reality. The traditional doctrine of um, our religions, on the other hand, are largely devoid of scientific explanations. The ultimate purpose of religion can be attained only when one first believes in it in one's heart and then puts it into practice. That's why I said faith without works is dead. Amen. You must first believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Without first understanding the belief, do not take, um, without first understanding beliefs, do not take hold. Understanding is the uh, starting point of knowledge. You know, you're getting good understanding. People, today will not accept what is not demonstrated by the logic of science. This is so true. If you talk to any young person today, it like that literally have to make sense to them. Even uh, internal truths demand logical and convincing explanations. So indeed religions have been uh, moving towards the point when their teaching could be significantly um, eludicated. Religion and science setting out from the uh, mission of dispelling the two aspects of human ignorance have earned, or excuse me, have seemed in the course of their development to take positions that were contradictory and irreconcilable, concilable. So you have a person, amen, and that person has inter ignorance and external ignorance. And then it's religion and science is going to bring them the answer to the truth or the way of the truth. So internal ignorance leads to internal knowledge. External ignorance leads to external knowledge. Amen. And all of this is in finding the truth. If we can um, go the way of goodness, amen, we will realize, amen, this goodness. 
through him that is pure, everything is pure. Religion and science setting, setting out with the uh, mission of dispelling the two aspects of human ignorance. However, for humankind to completely overcome the two aspects of ignorance and fully realize the goodness which the original mind desires, at some point in history, there must emerge a new truth, amen, which can uh, reconcile religion and science and resolve their problem in an integrated um, undertaking. I mean, it comes to something that's going to make sense for everybody. It may be displeasing to religious believers, especially to Christians, to learn that the new expression of truth must appear. They believe that the scriptures they have are already perfect and flawless. I believe that the word of the Lord must be studied and it must be rightly divided. Amen. Hallelujah. Because there is a way that seem right unto man, but I do believe that the um, that way is the way of death. Certainly, truth itself is unique, external, immutable, and absolute. Scriptures, however, are not the truth itself, but are textbooks teaching the truth. Remember, all words in the Bible were written by men that were inspired by the Holy Spirit. They were given to various in various times in history with the spiritual and intellectual development of humankind. The depth and the extent of teaching and the method of expressing the truth are naturally vary according to each page. So Jesus indicated that God would someday, someday reveal a new truth in John 16, 25. It was written, I have said this to you in figures and an hour now has come when I no more will want to speak to you in figures but tell you plainly of the Father. Amen. So what mission must the new um, truth fulfill? It must enable all people to overcome the true type of ignorance, um, internal and external, and fully comprehend the two types of knowledge. It should lead fallen people away with evil ways and um, towards the attainment of goodness, whereby enabling them to remove the contradiction of good and evil. Amen, hallelujah. It should be able to reveal the reality and the heart of God, this heart of joy at the time of creation and um, this heart of striving to save them. In order for God's providence of salvation to be completely uh, fulfilled, that means in order for salvation to come, you know, as Christians, we said we're saved, but salvation is the providence of salvation or restoration. Amen. This new truth should uh, first elevate the idolism, idolism of the democratic um, world to a new level, then use it to assimilate materialism. Finally, bring humanity into a new world. And I, I hope you guys saw that process. In order for God's providence of restoration to be completely fulfilled, this new truth should first elevate you, right? Hallelujah. And um, once it elevates you, it uses you to simulate material things, bring in the good. Amen. And finally, you'll be led to bring humanity back into this new world. This truth must be able to embrace all humanity, excuse me, all historical religions, ideologies, and philosophies and bring complete unity among um, them. However, unity uh, begins with unity between mind and body and between husband and wife. Since the purpose of truth is to realize goodness and since goodness is the origin of goodness, God will be the center of the world uh, founded upon this truth. However, will adore and serve God. Everyone, I'm sorry, will adore, will adore, amen, and serve God as their parents and live in harmony with each other in brotherly love. Now, the ultimate purpose of God's work of salvation 
is to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth. God fallen people to the uh, original state. You got the fallen people and they need to get to the original state. And this is the ultimate goal of restoration. The new truth should uh, guide fallen people to return to their original place in God. To do this, it must reveal the purpose by which creation are creating humankind in the universe and teach about the process of their restoration and its ultimate goals. This new truth must answer the following questions about the human form. Do humans beings fall by eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? That is written literally in the Bible. And why did God create human beings with the power to fall? And why did he not prevent their fall? Why did God not save sinful men in an instant with his mighty, uh, almighty power? If human um, history is the history of God's providence, it must be that God, the master of all laws, have led the wrong providence of restoration according to an orderly plan. Therefore, the new truth must offer um, answers to all the deeper questions of life concerning the beginning of a sinful man's story, course of the providence and consumption of history. Through this, we will recognize in every um, historical event, trace of the heart of God as he has struggled to save uh, fallen human beings. The new truth should be able to elucidate, elucidate, I'm sorry, elucidate many um, difficult issues in the Christianity, in Christianity, including the mysteries surrounded by the Holy Trinity. Was God's salvation or humanity uh, supposed, uh, possibly, only through shedding of blood or his only begotten son, Jesus, on the cross? Furthermore, what is the extent of redemption by the cross? Redemption by the cross is your spiritual salvation. Amen. Because Jesus got up, he gave us hope in the natural. What is the meaning of the um, biblical uh, prophecy of calamities? These are other different um, ideas of the Bible coached in symbolism and metaphor uh, must be explained by the new truth in plain language, what everyone can understand. Also, divergent interpretation of the Bible have um, inevitably led to the division of Christianity and its denominations. Only with aid of the new truth can we bring about Christian uh, unity. The life-given ultimate truth, however, cannot be mm, discovered through an exhaustive investigation of vehicles, excuse me, of scriptures of scholarly scholarly text, nor can it be um, invented by any human intellect. As it is written in the book of Revelations, you must again prophesy about many people and nations and tongues and king, Revelations 10, 11. And this truth must appear as the revelation from God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Let's look at Reverend Moon and Wait. God has sent one person on this earth to resolve the fundamental um, problem of human life and the universe. His name is Sun Myung Moon. He fought along against millions of devils, both in the spirit and the physical world, and he triumphed over them all through. Um, Intimate, intimate, intimate spiritual communion with God. Amen. The Bible said the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. Amen. So, and by meeting with Jesus and many saints in paradise, 
Amen. He brought to light all the secrets of heaven. Amen. I want to thank you for going through that introduction with me. I'm looking forward to um, taking you into part one. My name is Apostle Glenda Phillips Lee. I'm one of the 172 clergy. Amen. I am the co-chair for the American Clergy Leaders um, Conference, Women in Ministry. Hallelujah. I'm also the apostle for the International Gospel Baptist Church and the overseer and founder of the African American Clergy Leaders uh, Association. To God be all the glory. My email is international gospel helpers at gmail. You can um, reach me there or call 347-777-3769. I thank you, bless you, and have a great day. Thank you.